Okay, most of my views on this channel, which I've been doing for about 12 years now on YouTube, come from turning videos. My most popular ones are all about the stuff I make to go to the art markets and stuff like that, because a good portion of my income has come from selling wood turn stuff at art markets. And over that time, you know, I kind of pride myself on not having a whole bunch of tools to turn the stuff I make. I mean, a little set right here and what I got right there and stuff like that. And yet, even with as little as I've spent on my tools, I've wasted some money. I mean, there are things that they throw at wood turners that you just do not need. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Wood turning tools that you just don't need and why. Okay, when I first started turning, you know, wood turning was just coming online. I got books, value, books were out there. I was absorbing all the information. And a lot of the really cool guys out there were using a tool called a narrow parting gouge. Okay? So obviously I had to go get one, right? This thing is the suckiest turning, uh, parting gouge I've ever seen. These super narrow ones, they're like a sixteenth of an inch. It's basically just a piece of steel. I know for sure that whoever put this on the market was not a turner. They might have been an engineer looking, oh, you need something really wide right there to handle the torque coming down. But this is crap. And here's why. Imagine this, you get your brand new lathe, you set up all the tool, you have your parting gouge, your spindle gouge, your roughing gouge, the skew that you're scared the hell out of, and then, you know, you're doing all the work, you mix up your product, and you have to part it off, so you grab this newfangled tool. The advantage of it is gonna remove so little material, you can just save all the wood you got, right? So you come over here, you get it through it, and it makes a very narrow curve. And then all of a sudden, things start binding up on that curve. Why? Because it's a narrow curve. Wood moves, it starts pinching on it, and you start burning on the side. You basically caramelize the wood right there, so it starts grabbing and stuff like that, and it requires more force. And all that force is being put into your tool rest, as it should be, but your tool rest is made of iron, and this is steel, and it's a very narrow piece of steel. So it kind of magnifies the dent you then create it on your tool rest. So now every time you go over your tool rest, you have a duh, 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 and you'll never turn anything smooth. This tool sucks because it binds up in the wood and it destroys the tool rests that come with your tools. Now, you could use this and you know, you take a little bit off one side, then scoot it over, take a little bit off the other side, but doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of having a narrow parting tool? Yeah. Don't waste your money on this. Now, I probably should put a little bit of a caveat out there because other fellow wood turners, and when they come and watch me turn bowls and stuff like that, just my normal speed, they say I turn like a scalded ape. I'm making way too aggressive cuts. I'm not taking my time at all. Sounds are coming out of my machine that no machine should be making. So, you know, it could be my way of using the tool is why I hate it so much. You know, if you disagree with me, please leave a comment down below. I mean, educate everybody else, but you know, if you disagree with me, you're just wrong on this tool because it sucks. Now, unfortunately, the next tool I want to talk to you about is one that just comes with your lathe. So it's not necessarily you're buying it, but when it goes bad, please don't buy a replacement like it. And I'm talking about iron tool rests. I kind of think that they just put these cheap things in there because it's inexpensive, it keeps the price down the lathe, and it, it's so that you can open up the box, put it together, and actually start turning something right then and there. But I guarantee you, this is one of the first things that you want to upgrade because your gouges are steel. The steel is getting banged around on this thing. Eventually, you're going to dent this. And if you're a scalded, a brute ape like me, you're gonna dent it every single time you turn. So every time you go to the lathe, you're gonna have to take a mill file to it and sand it down. This is the one that came with my jet, and notice it's never been used, because it's going went away right off the get-go to be replaced with something that's a lot more durable, a lot smoother, and I can be my 
aggressive nature with it. But some of y'all might really like the fact that you can grind different shapes on these. Does anybody out there actually modify these any bit with a grinder to suit your needs? I don't know, it sounds kind of stupid to me, but some people do. This next one is gonna piss off all you safety police out there, but safety drives. Arrgh! A normal drive spur like this one right here, you drive into the center of the piece. Obviously, I'm on the other side. I'm just showing you for a demonstration. And each one of these teeth kind of get pushed into the wood so you get a good bite. So whenever you're spinning this along, you can put a lot of torque on your piece of wood as you're turning it, and it's going to keep on turning. But what a lot of people that are starting out like, and it kind of makes sense, are these safety drives. Notice it's a round circle right there. So if you press this end there, there's not a lot of bite on torque. So if you get a heavy catch on your blank or something like that, basically the wood just stops. It doesn't scare you with a heavy catch. The problem is if you're overly aggressive and just put a lot of normal torque in your normal turning, it's constantly stopping. So you end up pushing it farther and farther and farther. And I do know a lot of people, like my dad, he actually uh, takes a file and kind of puts little notches in there just to tailor how much torque he can get on this before the blank stops. This is a great thing for, turn, for learning to turn, but if you just understand your basic principles from the get-go, you don't really need it. Now, one of the most stressful things new woodworkers have, and even people like me, we are constantly looking for better ways to sharpen our tools. And getting the proper angle is kind of a constant battle. Because if your angle gets off just a little bit in how you sharpen things, well, then it translates to how you're using the tool and the results you get on the side. So this, setting up your angles, is just incredibly important. And I'm going to make a lot of fanboys out there really, really mad. But I do encourage you to disagree with me down in the comments below. But I spent a lot of money on a very specialized jig from, designed by Stuart Batty. And I'm sorry, but I'm a bit of an idiot, and I never figured out how to make it work. Maybe it's just a little bit too complicated for me, but you have these small little angles that you're supposed to be able to match up just a little bit over little spaces, and, you know, he's got 40, 60, 30, 25, 65. Yeah, I was a bit confused, so I never used it. So this might be something you could avoid. Finally, I want to talk about one of those gizmos that the snake oil salesmen tell you you just have to either make or buy, especially you bowl turners. I mean, how many of you are stressing out there about the thickness of your bowl? So what do they do? Well, I got roped into it. You know, we got these wire things right here. You want to know what this thing is? You kind of set the thickness of what you want. You put it on the side of the bowl and then you push it through. And when it starts leaving a scratch, that's where you know you're too thick in that part. It's wider than whatever this gap is. No, no. But, you know, Dad, he bought this really fancy one that's got a spring on it and a little gauge and stuff like that. And you can put it on the inside of the bowl and it just kind of... It'll tell you the thickness by far, how far out the gauge so, is. you're an idiot. And it's so dense. I use this all the time, folks. This allows me to know exactly how, where I got something too thick. And this, you don't scratch with it. You feel with it, know where you're at. And you can, with this one, you can set it anywhere you want. And with this one, it will tell you where you need to be. Use He's your fingers, idiot. fingers. The fingers will tell you what it is. Let me tell you some tools you really don't need to spend money on. Not the stuff that Sean picked out. Besides, I use this all the time. He's just an idiot. First, there's a, there's a tool out there that's got a, a point. It's worthless. Anything you can do with this, you can do with a skew. Don't buy them. 
This is a little gouge, I mean, hollowing out tool that I just had to have because I wanted to use it. But it clogs up on me all the time and it's a pain, especially when I'm doing semi-wet wood. So it's called a wizard. Don't get it. And texturing tools. I've got many of them that I never even opened up. You try it one time, it just doesn't work. So don't spend your money on them. Spend your money on good tools. Don't buy sets, buy good single tools. Have a nice day. Sorry about that, I forgot to lock the door. But anyways, I hope you got a few tips out of that, some ideas. Uh, generally, everybody works a little bit differently when they come to lathe, and I don't know of a, another woodworking tool that doesn't instigate people wanting to invent little jigs and stuff to do everything. A lot of them I find that you'd be better off just sticking with a simple tool, standard techniques, and just getting the work done not having trying to reinvent the wheel but that's just my opinion and some people just enjoy coming up with new ways of doing stuff anyways hope you enjoyed this picked out a few ideas of how you could save some money and where you might be better off putting your money and in the end remember it's always worth the effort to learn create though all i think i really did here was create some controversy but i did share it with y'all be safe have fun